you know, you are a footballer, you do what we say. Exactly. And if you want to think you can become a DJ or an artist or a fashion you can go that route. You can go that route. Wow! Oh, but so, so they're scared to be ridiculed, basically. Yeah, they're scared yeah. to become a meme. Okay, they're scared, to, uh, they're yeah. scared yeah. to become a meme. Yeah. Here with Nathan Pulser and Chris John Guana. How are you guys doing? I'm very, very good. We're good, we're good, thanks. Yeah. Now, Nathan is uh, an Ajax player, former Ajax player. You recently yes. retired, didn't you? Yes, I, I, I was retired in 2017, and okay. then football called me back. Uh, and then I, I came back to the game as a footballer last year, and then I, de I decided now, in actual fact, three days ago, <laughs> no, I think, really? yeah, recent. I decided this it's, yeah. It is official. Okay, now Chris, we know you for freestyle yeah. soccer, right? But not only that, you now hold a Guinness World Record. Can you break that down? Um, it's actually been a year now that I've held it. Um, basically, it's the highest altitude ball drop and control yeah. um, by a footballer, a human. Um, so they drop from a crane of 37.4 meters. And they drop the ball, and then you just have to control it um, five times, keep it up for five times, and that's considered a world record. Yeah. Congratulations, that's incredible. And you're still holding it a year late. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so this is an, enter an entertainment channel, as everyone knows, but sports has a really big play when it comes to entertainment, right? And, yeah. and in terms of putting the games and the love for soccer and rugby and cricket online. Do you think that South Africa is doing a good job at that? At, that? at like actually representing what we see in our stadiums online? I just feel that we, have, we had this conversation late, um, earlier. Um, Africa as a whole, um, I think we're behind in that regard. Um, you look at overseas and especially in Europe and how they go about um, because sport now has become more technological, yeah. uh, more tech and then they're translating to what they do, the social media. Yeah. And that's why you got huge, huge, um, you know, stars, especially in football, like your Messi and your Ronaldo who's got like 70 million followers um, because they've noticed that um, the future is technology and social media and they've been going there with probably for the past six seven years yeah. and then only now has all these channels been popping up especially here in south africa first they they slowly trying to um go in that route yeah. um starting up with podcasts and stuff but the actual clubs themselves and franchises so do you think then the players have a big part of that i was about to say now because i'm going to be very critical okay. <laughs> of you know south african soccer players yes. um it's not up to the bosses or the teams to actually make sure that um you know they go that social media space mm. that way the players themselves um need to know that or learn from pros um, that internationally that I'll give an example okay. a I follow a Keegan Buchanan um, pro footballer mm -hmm. and also what he does very interestingly on the side is he posts a lot about what he enjoys being fashion with music but he also posts um, when he goes to gym a lot a way to use the place for um, Gordon Arrows, always post what he does um, after training, um, his training regime and how he's trying to look after his body. You get a person like Ete Komodise, um, a, a, a lot around, not around football, but a, around his, his, his fashion and um, I know his love for Manchester City and, all, <laughs> <laughs> and always trying to um, get interest from the public, not on football only, but on the brand Deco Motise, which is yeah. a farm that is like very, very unique. And there's also like um, other, then you go overseas, your players like your 
your Lingard, um, not more about football, but like dancing moves or whatever. And people are going to resonate with that. They're going to be drawn with that. You know what I mean? I feel like, yeah, I feel like in South Africa, the rugby players are maybe making a little bit more moves in terms of establishing like this online strength because for example Sia Khaleesi for example he has a documentary on Showmax yeah. as Brian Habana and so to see that okay cool the rugby guys were actually coming through with that that was great to see and I think maybe even having some of the sports guys show their love for fashion and for music and for international soccer players is really great I think the, the South, South African soccer guys they're very um they're scared. They're scared and and and, and very wary because so I think it's more to do with the with the culture built in the in the actual game in the actual industry you know yeah you know, and th and this is this is being honest you know uh, um, you know there are there are only a handful of footballers in South Africa as as you have said that that has actually been been uh, uh, taught enough per, perhaps you're going to put it like that or you know feel feel um, uh, confident enough in who they are yeah. as a as a person not even a footballer as they 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 feel sure of who they are and they know look here even though um, I am a footballer I also have a love for music and for cars and for this and that yeah. now the now the industry hasn't been uh, built to empower you to watch feel like that mm. and and it's a uh, sad because it's been it's been built to actually just you know, you are a footballer, yeah. you do what we say. Exactly. And if you want to think you can become a DJ or an artist or a, a fashion you icon. You can go that route. You can go that route. Yeah. But so, so they're scared to be ridiculed, basically. Yeah, they're scared yeah. to become well, a meme. They're scared, yeah. to, they're scared yeah. to become a meme. Yeah. Are they scared though? Is that pressure? Do you think it's more internal or is it external? The boy comes from, from maybe a rural area. He's always yeah. been told to, to, to follow. Um, the guy who's in charge, you know, so, so he has a very subservient way of uh, doing things, you know, so he's, he's scared of actually being who he is. In actual fact, he doesn't know who he is. So as he comes into this football um, industry, who he is, I'm told to do this, do that, do this, maybe he finds himself through that pathway where he has a love, as I said, for, for different things, other than, than just the playing, you know, but because he's been told so many times, you do as I say, you know, and this and, and look guys, I'm, I'm being harsh, but we have to to hit home to exactly why perhaps if you look at guys abroad, those guys do whatever they want to do, you know, irrespective of whether their form hasn't been good or if they're not doing well, those guys are still sure of who they are and they've, they've used that to actually improve themselves yeah. as, as people and also as a, a footballer. And if they're doing well on the field, it just helps their, their uh, brand, you know. Whereas here we 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 harp a lot on what the, the guy is doing on the field, and if he's not doing well enough on the field, he has no uh, right to go and be this or do that or do that. He first needs to do what we say, and this is as as fans, as maybe family, as the um, industry. I'll give you so many examples. I mean, there are clubs yeah. that. They, they tell their players, they oh, monitor what you put out there. Um, example, the kids of Chiefs, they told um, some of the players, you can't do interviews in a certain yeah. um, soccer publication. They are, they are um, uh, known to, and, to and do Orlando, that quite... Yeah. And Orlando heavy. Pirates would be like, yo, after... Uh, Bibon Chumayelo had posted, I think they had won a walk, um, uh, walk up, uh, a net bank cup. <laughs> we wish! <laughs> yeah, they, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. They had won a, a net bank cup and then he posted um, pictures of the guy holding a trophy and they were naked like in the showers. Oh. And then there was a lot of negative spin-offs from that and then Paris said like, yo, listen, don't, don't, don't do that again. Bafana Bafana beat Seychelles 6-0 here at home. A week later, they were going to play um, Seychelles, Maher my, my Island, um, away leg. I think a day before, two days before, they posted um, pictures of them celebrating, not celebrating, but just relaxing on the beach and um, in the island. And then we got the nil-nil draw. Had they won one nil, it was going to be so much different on social media. Yeah. But this was a nil-nil draw. Then they go back to the and then, picture. And then they go back to the picture, like you were saying uh, earlier on. Example, a Pogba um, didn't have a very good time with the 
uh, uh, Mourinho. Yes. Um, so he had posted some stuff on, 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 on Twitter and on Instagram and people were like, the, you got these investigators on social media that they were like, okay, this translates into that and that. Yeah, so they, so they form their own narrative of exactly and, what, what happened. And then yeah. God scores at the Emirates and doesn't moonwalk is, and, um, <clears throat> and um, they won the game. Next game, they play terribly and maybe they lose three or four games and then they go back to that picture and be like, oh, okay, you want to be a dancer and you moonwalk, whatever, you know what I mean? So, so could publications and in terms of the media now, yes. in terms of TV shows and, because um, I know, for example, Super Sports has a show called Home Ground. You guys can check it out on Showmax. And it's, it seems to want to show both sides in terms of like the game and the sports, but also the lifestyle aspects. Do we need more shows like that? So it's not maybe the responsibility on the players so much, but a player can be interviewed and we see that oh he likes fashion and it's not as risky if i can put it that way as him venturing on him by himself okay, remember the show you were on when you were in europe yeah. gold diggers yeah yeah so that I look i mean i got to be honest with you it was a it was a show which which was shot like in 2008 yeah. uh with a with a uh, show where i i lived and you know what i what i what i do when i'm when i'm off it was, it was the first episode you know but I, what I what I do know is that I, I need to go find that episode. I now. had I had, I had fans, you know, saying like, "Who's this guy? He's he's not even playing in the top league abroad and all." And I was like, "Gee, was people are like really mean, you know?" My my view was: look, at the end of the day, I, I don't care what you have to say. The fact is, I'm playing there. The fact is, I'm doing well. The fact is that uh, you know, I I have enough balls to like say come into my home this is what i'm doing and you know it's 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 about being uh, real you know and true to who you, who you are because there's a a difference in you know um, uh, trying to like be a brand that you that you are not and being who you are and i think more and more the world um, of sports and football is beginning to understand that if 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 you can be true to who you are yeah. and you can actually translate that on and off the field it will it will help you you know and yeah. eventually um the fans who, who who were at first haters they actually exactly. become your biggest fans yeah. you know it's a period what the show had to end but it was uh, i think it played for like three four seasons oh, yeah. and basically what that show was about was going to uh players lives like in europe so we had to travel around europe going to players that are african based players that are yeah. playing in europe and just yeah. see outside of the football field what so that show essentially just like trying to show the footballers outside of the um of the field and um it's what lex i just wish more shows online in 2019 going forward could be like that um in south africa in africa we need more um presence online um especially clubs especially professional football players what, okay let me ask you this do you think the clubs would be open because, for example, so we had the A1 Sports, right? And the A1 Sports, had a, we had challenges because we want to be able to feature players, but we thought we had to approach the players. Meanwhile, we have to approach the club yeah. to first and almost Asian get a, a, an uh, approval, in a, in a sense. Yes. So do you, think, do you think that the clubs are open to that or they're only open to the super sports and, you know, the big TV names? No, clubs, clubs are open to that, man. It also depends, actually, which club. Yeah, okay, um, yeah, okay. It also... <laughs> yeah. It's off and off? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Because, because a lot of the stuff that maybe can be said can be misinterpreted, like, by players. Um, I mean, not by players, by fans. Yeah. Um, so you might say a certain thing, and then the club won't be happy with that. So... <laughs> They'll be actually part of your editing process if, if, if they <laughs> see, if they can want. The, you know what I mean? The, so where the whole of culture that yeah. is built into the industry comes from, because everything stems back to whether or not that person feels comfortable in saying this because he's scared of him stepping on the the big man's toes, yeah. which is the uh, the the owner or the club or the coach or the uh, structures like SAF or PSL or whatever, you know. So as long as we watch them still have that in fear, which is like mm -hmm. an undertone to everything, you actually won't get enough players coming forward. Or not coming forward, or at least being like who they are. Because, because I mean, yeah. how many fans wouldn't love to, to sit down with a tickle and just ask him 
pure things. Just ask him, look here, when, when you were playing for Sundowns, what happened between you and so-and-so or you and whoever, you know? And, and, and him actually feeling confident enough to say, look here, this is what happened. And not, they're not having a scripted approach to it. Like, like you know what? Uh, that is life and that is football. Because if, you, if, you, if you're going to give those, those um, uh, cliched, you know, kind of, kind of a phrases, eventually people are going to just move on. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's I think where we we need to identify maybe as an industry. You know, is we is we need to get get players feeling a lot more comfortable about who they are, and then also perhaps the advantage of that is you get players actually improving on and off the field. Because I mean, I've never played with a player that that does extremely well, but but is scared. It's, it's just it's just yeah. Listen, as much as social media is really really um, good and it's a positive, it can also damage a brand just like that. Sure. So, and, uh, and I, I also understand why club bosses and all these big franchises and institutions are scared um, stuff going out because it can damage the reputation of a club just like that. Um, Sponsors come along with that and you know what I mean? also add the whole pressure to it sometimes. It's yeah. So. We're going to wrap things up there. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I think we had a good conversation. I think we were a bit worried off camera, but it was a great conversation, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank nice, you. Thanks. Guys, let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Like, comment, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Cheers, guys. <laughs>